What's going on everyone? Welcome back, Crazy for KV's RC. I'm Tim. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for watching. So I'm hitting you all with a comp build update. We're on episode four, uh, Crazy for Comps. This is kind of my dive in. Um, season two of building some competition trucks. Don't have a competition lined up just yet. Um, I would love to do East Coast Championship in the spring. Um, probably hit some local stuff here come this fall, over the winter. While I'm trying to plan agendas and things like that and pick a trip to go on, um, I definitely want to work on getting these builds done, getting things pointed out at least as high as possible, getting some drive time on them, and uh, ultimately having trucks ready whenever that competition does you know, come about. So let's start off with something you all have not seen at all. Um, brand new, we already talked about class two. We've, I've shown you class three as well. Where's class one at? Let's check it out real quick. All right, so this is my class one. It's definitely not much right now. Um, nothing special. You guys can probably tell I got a Hilux body. This is a Tamiya Hilux body. Um, those are dirt cheap, really, really affordable um, to get the grill kit and the bed and the cab. Um, I think you're looking at about 50, maybe 60 bucks. So really affordable. I'm gonna hack on it anyway. It's gonna get beaten um, driving in competitions. So really no need to go like the RC four wheel drive route and just kind of thrash it anyway. Really no issues with it besides for the fact that the, uh, the bed is not deep enough to get drop bed points. So we might end up cutting the bed out, making our own bed um, to give it those drop bed points, but we'll see where our points fall. So before we get the body out of the way completely um, and I set it aside, I do want to talk about, you know, obviously some things coming. Um, now the new Sorker rules and pretty much any standardized, um, you know, RC scale crawling rule set, um, Sorker is probably the most restrictive with its rules. Um, and even they will allow um, some pretty major body modifications now. Obviously that rule set does change, so depending when you watch this, you know, go read them. But I have been doing a little bit of research, a little bit of reading. The back of the body only has to extend past the trailing edge of this rear tire, and the front has to extend past the leading edge of this front tire. So I don't think I'm gonna do much cutting on the front. We might do a little bit of trimming um, just to accommodate bumpers, grills, give us the best clearance and approach. Um, but I think I am going to be doing some uh, bobbing of this bed. It is really, really long. Definitely hinders our you know, departure angle. And ultimately, it's going to take some weight off of the back of the truck anyway. But I haven't really got that far. Um, kind of doing some research on the best ways to do that. Obviously, no interior, nothing like that yet. So um, still got some figuring to do. This is kind of in its infancy. All right. So what you guys are looking at, this is actually... The heart and soul of this is a GK C1 um, from GK Chassis. I actually won this chassis as my kind of door prize, uh, raffle prize from ECC. So it seemed fitting. Um, a lot of people seem to really like them. Um, a few folks, you know, had pretty good luck with them in competition. Uh, this is like a G10. It's not carbon fiber, but it is, you know, a composite. It's not as heavy as aluminum. Um, flat rail. It's got a flat skid. This is a, a class one compliant chassis set up for like 11.3 to 11.5 wheelbase. Um, we've actually got this one set up on 11.5 and it's running um, some straight axles. These are AR45s off of an SCX 10.3. I had these lying around, parts bin. You guys have been seeing some of the organization stuff uh, update, you know, kind of what I turned my closet back there into to follow, but um, yeah, what else do we have in here? We got a we got a flat Vader skid. This is like their monkey skid. So really, really small. We've got the Ford motor mount from TGH. We actually had to do a flip on that because of the driver side drop. We have an offset front pumpkin right here. Pretty standard AR45. Um, so we did a flip really straightforward on that. It actually helped uh, align better with the mounting holes on, in this chassis as well. Um, and that's mated, not yet, but will be mated to a TGH Creeper T transmission. Um, this has about 30% overdrive built in, I believe. Um, I'll put the real numbers down here at the bottom of the screen. Just double check that. 
We got a Reeves 777. This is gonna be a 3S truck. Um, and that's kind of limited by my motor here. This is a Three Brothers black jacket. It's one of their censored out runners. It's gonna be paired up with a uh, Mamba Micro X2. Uh, this uh, censored 4S capable, but we're only gonna run 3S. The motor is a 2650 kV. Should be plenty. We got 11 tooth pinion on there. I did have to drop from the recommended 60 tooth uh, Kimbro spur gear that TGH recommends. This is a Vanquish 56. Um, so I wanted to get the smallest pinion on there as possible. I could definitely do a 10. I could even go smaller than that if I wanted. I didn't have any of that. I had an 11. So we're gonna see how it does. It is on straight axles, so we don't have as much reduction but I'm not sure how this transfer case does with reduction. So we'll drive it, we'll get a feel for it, um, see what we can tune out of it with the ESC and the motor. And if we need to, drop pinion. And we can also always do underdrive in the axles as well. But the reason I had to do that is because when you do the flip, um, that larger spur gear will hit the side of the mount for this Ford motor mount. Not too big of a deal though. Probably one of the biggest challenges with this truck was figuring out links. This is the first truck I've ever done where I did custom links. I went through a link bin. Um, I've got all sorts of assorted, mostly Vanquish, VS410 type stuff. Um, also have quite a few axials, um, spare links from Capra's, SCX 10 threes. I've got spare from Traxxas. So just kind of started placing things exactly where I wanted. Knew I wanted this to be an 11.5 wheelbase. I wanted the longest wheelbase possible. And that's actually the wheelbase of our body here. So didn't have to do any modification. Um, with Sorker, you do need to be within a half an inch of the wheelbase of the body, um, the center of the fenders. But what I did was I even unthreaded some of the links to get the lengths right, kind of got it where it felt good. Um, I put some placeholder shocks in place. I put 90s in place, that's kind of all I had. I didn't have any 80s laying around, but kind of kept that in mind um, that they were gonna be a little long and get things as close as possible for us. Once I had the axles kind of where I wanted them, um, I pulled all the links off, pulled the axles off, and just took measurements, eye to eye measurements. And I actually used Vanquish. Um, they just started doing titanium builder links, um, pretty affordably priced. I think I got all the links for this truck for like 60 bucks in their titanium. They're not bent, they're not high clearance or anything like that. But I think for class one, um, I kind of feel a little bit better about that. So once those came in, they came in a couple of days ago, I got them built, got them on the truck and uh, pretty happy with them. Overall, this truck, it just, the best way to describe it is it's, it's kind of cute, it's so little. It's crazy what an inch, really it's 0.8 shorter in wheelbase than a kind of a standard trail truck, but it's really, really narrow right now. I've got it sucked in about as far as I can with the wheels I have, um, and I'm really happy with it. Pretty good uh, angles in the front. For some reason, my panhard was a little bit too long when I ordered it. Probably miscalculated or just didn't have it quite centered um, the way I wanted the, the truck to sit. But found another link that works. I unscrewed the rod ends just a little bit. Um, I may end up in the next order I make from Vanquish. I'm about every month or two I order stuff from there. Um, I may go ahead and order a replacement for that. Don't have anything the length I need, unfortunately, but um, right now it's fine. It's definitely gonna be good for a shakedown run once we get to that point. There's two other things I haven't mentioned on the truck. One, I got a little NSDRC micro winch. This is an RS100. It's between 120 to 170 ounce inches. 6S, it's good to 8.4, which is awesome. The last thing worth mentioning is wheel and tire combo. So you can see I've got tusks on here. These actually have squid, SL3D squid inserts, specifically designed for these 3.93 tusks. Um, I did notice at ECC that the, the Hyraxes have kind of fallen out of favorite. It seems like tusks are what pretty much everyone is running. Unfortunately, the only class one tusks they make are these 393s, they don't make them. 4.19 so they're a little short you know compared to what it's allowed but um, they're really sticky they're good tires people seem to really really like them so we decided to give these a shot and these tires and foams are wrapped around some vanquish kmc machetes they're 1.9 um, and then i have just this uh scale beadlock ring on outside of it with some scale hardware we might eventually change out that scale hardware just because it does 
when you're side hilling or your sidewall is pushed against the rocks, it does tend to want to grab rocks instead of just kind of letting the standard um, cap head screws kind of sliding off. But currently I'm waiting on two more parts um, to start being able to do some testing and tuning, even if it's just without the body, just make sure there's no binding, everything looks good, the amount of overdrive is about right, and set all of our endpoints and whatnot, uh, program our radio for our winch, etc. And those two things are, one, um, I had to do a flip on this Creeper T. The Creeper T has a kind of an incline to it on its mount. Um, it kind of helps if you put it on an angled skid, kind of helps level it out. Um, it also kind of gives the approach for the top shaft a little bit less dramatic. Um, but the problem is when you flip it, it becomes even worse. So I ordered a TGH, I think they call it the wedge. Um, and it's designed to go underneath there and flatten it back out just to make it a little bit less crazy to go from our top shaft um, our output on this Ford motor mount to the input on the transfer case. That being said, um, I probably could make some drive shafts work, cut them up, figure it out, but I'm actually waiting for XORC to restock their cut to length top shafts. I'm pretty sure they're gonna work perfectly. Once I get that wedge in there, the angle's not gonna be very dramatic, should be just fine, um, and that'll get us kind of up and running. And at that point, I'll be able to start, I'll be able to fill the shocks, mount the body, start feeling it out a little bit, and ultimately um, start driving the truck, getting used to it as I slowly start to point it out. I need to build an interior, I need to do inner fenders, possibly do a drop bed, scale accessories, um, etc. cetera but uh, really liking it, um, pretty excited. I think I'm actually most excited for this just because it's so different compared to what I have. And uh, overall, a really solid chassis, easy to build on. But I've talked long enough about class one. This is definitely gonna be the longest portion though. Um, we'll go ahead and hop into class two. I'll show you a couple things I did differently and then we'll move on to class three after that. All right, y'all, you can tell by this beautiful body. This is my class two. If this is your first time seeing this truck, I'm gonna put a link up here to the playlist. Um, just kind of walk through a little bit more in detail what this truck is. I'm not gonna hit everything. We'll do a quick little recap, but I'm definitely not gonna go part by part. So for a real quick rundown, this is a Jekyll and Hyde by Corrupt Carbon Works. I did cut the back of it off just a little bit. It was a hair too long. Um, these are Corrupt Carbon Works titanium bumpers that I stole from my previous uh, class two. Link that up here if you guys haven't seen that truck as well. It's got a fish's skid, fish's body mounts. Um, it's got uh, F10 portals underneath it running uh, Krupp's transmission. It's got an NSDRC RS700, uh, one of their special blue edition. It's also got the blue matching servo horn, pretty fancy. We got a Pro 500 winch. I wanted a really strong winch for class two. It's definitely like the most competitive, uh, usually the largest amount of competitors compete in class two. So I wanted a winch that I could just absolutely depend on. And that one that I would never have to question whether it was strong enough or whether I trusted it being strong enough in really, really harsh environment, tough situations. I got a Castle Creations Mambo Micro X2 stuffed down in here. You can kind of see the wiring mess. Um, and then underneath here, I have a black jacket by Three Brothers RC. This is their 4S edition. It's a 2000 kV motor um, and this truck is running 4S. I made a quick little Lexan battery mount, mostly just for now. Um, I really don't want my battery sitting up there, but it is a really small 450, so not too big of a deal. Got my Flysky Noble, uh, small little small receiver here. Um, really liking the fly sky for competition stuff, especially when it comes to winching. I like where the winch switches are and the fact that I'm very good at programming it very quick and I can do a soft start on the winches just in case you bump that. Um, these really powerful, really fast winches, if you bump it, it may end up unhooking your winch, whatever. Um, the way I have it set up, you kind of have to hold it before it really starts to get spooling. But once it's going, it's it's plenty fast. So this is running Corrupt's high clearance links. Um, it's got some deluxe fab cut to length drive shafts in it. It's a very forward biased, angled skid, um, really capable chassis. So I've got some draft techs. These are from deluxe fab. These were originally 96 millimeters. So this is one of the few things that I've changed since the last video. So 
these were 96 mil and actually if you guys can tell another thing i did change we'll just go ahead and call it out now is these tusks uh j concepts 4.75 inch tusks it's got some dual stage foams a little bit firmer in the rear a little softer up front you can tell by the tires they are dirty um, this truck has been out and uh, has been ran um, the first time I had it out was a quick shakedown. I didn't do any filming. I just kind of wanted to run it for 10 minutes and see how it reacted. It felt like it was pretty top heavy. This body has some uh, 3D printed rear seat, front seats, and a cage in it. Um, looks great. Unfortunately, it does add quite a bit of weight, um, pretty high. And uh, because of it, the length of the seats, the depth of the seats, I'm having a hard time getting it sat down far enough. Something we might look into later, making some changes on that, um, the interior at least. But, so the truck just felt really top heavy. Um, this chassis, it, it's kind of inherent that it sits up a little bit high. But when I had the truck out running, I was having some issues with side hilling. Everything else was working really well. Um, the motor, the ESC combo, running great. Really good steering, steering angle. We got about 30-ish percent overdrive on this corrupt transmission. Um, I really like the truck. It just wasn't side hilling that great. And that is a downfall of this chassis. Um, these kind of high belly, high center section chassis, they don't side hill quite as well as some of the other ones. But they're really good vertical climbers and uh, they do pretty much everything else really well. Big overhangs, things like that. Um, a lot less of an issue because of all the belly clearance in here. But one of the things I wanted to do was I ordered these offset shock caps because I wanted to bring the shock overall length of the shocks down a little bit um, I didn't want to go all the way down to 80s because I do like having the articulation in an aggressive chassis like this um, but these offset shock caps bring them down six mil so now we're basically running 90 mil shocks and then I also did some uh, spring tuning so we went from soft to mediums up front they've got a little bit of preload on them uh, they use just o-rings to do preload on these draft techs really simple and then in the rear, I actually have in the works RC uh, mediums, and they're not as firm as these deluxe fab mediums. Um, but as the weight transfers during a climb, it's nice to have a little bit, you know, firmer shock. I'm running 50 weight oil all around, which I was pretty happy with. The truck's pretty, pretty slow. It's not very dramatic in its reaction to things, but. I may actually drop that just a little bit. I might go to like a 35 in the front and a 45 in the rear. But other than that, that pretty much wraps up um, what's changed about the class two. Stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm gonna hit you all with a little bit of running footage. We're gonna take this thing out. We're gonna run it again in this configuration with the different shock springs and the different shock caps. Change the shock positions a little bit as well. I think I got it set up a little bit better, but we're gonna find out. Okay, so we got this beast in front of us now. This is my class three, this is my Chopra. This is a brazen scale, high-low. This is running a uh, 2200 KV uh, revolver from Holmes Hobbies. It's got a deluxe fab portal trans in it. It's sitting on Capro axles. We got a Holmes Hobbies Crawlmaster Mini V2. We don't have the V3 in there. Um, got my Fly Sky Noble radio just kinda stuck to the side of the chassis here. Everything's kind of stuck in here just to get it to the point where we can do some testing on it. Um, our winch is over here, spooled up, ready to go. 300 IS comp spec from Reefs. Love that winch, plenty fast, plenty powerful. Um, and then I'm running dual RS 700s from NSDRC. So we have dual thousand ounce inch servos front and rear, tons of power. It's very similar to how you guys saw it in the last video. We are finally outfitted with our shocks. These are in the works RC 90 mil. Um, they're kind of a similar Traxxas big bore sort of modified shock. These did take almost six weeks to come in from the time I ordered them and they were in stock when I ordered, allegedly. So the only thing I wasn't happy about was the wait time and lack of communication throughout the process. But they did finally show up, not too big of a deal. I originally had really grand plans of pointing this truck out I just don't know how feasible that is. Um, even getting a Capra interior in here with the way this cage sits on this chassis, it's gonna be really tight. Um, this truck also needs sliders, just like my class two. So we're gonna make some sliders up. We're gonna make some at least front inner fenders, just to kind of block the view 
Um, see if I can show y'all. If you look at the truck right here, obviously the panels aren't painted, so it kind of exaggerates it, but you can really see everything kind of zip tied to this little side accessory mount for the chassis. But hopefully I can get some stuff to cover that up or get some of it down on a slider and it won't be as bad. This truck's kind of a wiring mess right now. It's kind of been my least priority, but I am really excited for it. Um, really, really capable four wheel steer car. It's gonna be a ton of fun. Um, this truck does compress very, very low. It will basically, um, rails will almost touch the axles the way I have it set up. I could give it a little bit more, but it sits up pretty high as it is. And we do have this molded cage on top. It's obviously four wheel steer. So it's gonna be a ton of fun once we get it built. Um, one of the biggest things you guys will see change is I am gonna be running some West Desert Wheeler cut and shuts. Don't have them in yet. So these are Proline, they're High Racks LPs, uh, like a 5.25, that's kind of the size I wanna go with. Um, and these have squid inserts in them as well. So a 3D printed insert on super shafty wheels. But this truck is extremely capable. It'll, you know, it's got all the flex um, and a lot of weight down on the axles. It's got a little bit of brass up front. It's got steel beadlock rings. So the wheels are all really heavy and it's also got the uh, servos on the axles. So should be a ton of fun, should perform really well. Um, I'm excited to get it, you know, kind of finished up do some painting on the panels. So we're gonna go take the new C2, the Jekyll and Hyde out. We're gonna do some running with it. Um, hopefully my shock changes made a difference. I like the way it drives a little more. I'll see you out there on the rocks. Before you go, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. I'll catch you guys next time, thanks. Like I said, stay tuned guys. You guys saw the progress on C1, finally getting that rolling. And actually not too far from having a, a running truck on that. Um, body work, scale points, all that stuff still to come. Um, C3, as you saw, pretty much sits the same, but it is a running truck right now. And I got the link links about where I need them to be, I think. Um, so I just need to paint those panels and bring it out here and do a little bit of testing or maybe go to, uh, go to the lake. But, Stay tuned, guys. Got more videos coming. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'll see you next time. Thanks.